we're trying not to be afraid of the future. Uh, we are accepting that it's here and that we need to make the most of it. We are teaching our teachers how they can use it in their classrooms, how they can make use it to make their lives better. We're spreading it out in our departments, HR, curriculum, federal programs. We're encouraging everyone to see how it works for them because by seeing how it works for us, we can show students how it works for them. You're listening to the smartsocial.com podcast. I'm your host, Josh Oaks. This is our district talk segment where we interview district leaders to learn how they're keeping students safe on social media so those students can someday shine online. Now, let's get back to the interview. Hi, I'm Nicole Swigert. I'm superintendent of Rapid City Area Schools in Rapid City, South Dakota. We have 12,400 students and 23 buildings. Hi, I'm Scott Elder. I'm the superintendent of the Albuquerque Public Schools. We have 143 schools and about 67,000 students that we're happy to serve. Yeah, hello, my name is Adam Swidiard. I'm the superintendent of Spokane Public Schools in Eastern Washington State. We're a district of approximately 30,000 students across 58 schools. Happy to be here today. How is your school district approaching AI tools like ChatGPT? So our school district's approaching AI tools like ChatGPT in a number of ways. First is we're really working on a policy. We're about to release it here in December that addresses a lot of our concerns, especially around personal identifiable information, and making sure the tools are being used well. Secondly, we're not allowing our teachers to just utilize any tool. We actually asked them to submit it to the technology department, and we created a rubric to evaluate those tools. And some of the areas in that rubric include usability, integration, how well does it come into our existing network, training, do they provide any training on how to use it well? Do they have support so that if something happens, do they have a customer support? And then did they have scalability? Is it something that we can uh, use more of as the teacher gets more comfortable with? And finally, really, I think the big one is data security, making sure that our kids and our staff are not sharing information that is theirs and they don't want that. We don't know where it's going. We don't know how these companies are going to use that data. So you want to be careful. I also think you want to make sure there's an ethical component to it so that there's some sort of a guardrail so that, you know, kids can't do something really scary on it that should be safe for, for our use. You know, there's a lot of inherent bias in, in AI because the people who wrote all the stuff it's generating, they look like me. And there's a lot of people out there that don't look like me. And we want to make sure that, that what our kids are getting doesn't reflect that internal bias. So there's a lot of things you need to look at in, in getting ready to use AI, but it is the tool of the future. Can't ignore it figure out a way to use it well. We're trying not to be afraid of the future. We are accepting that it's here and that we need to make the most of it. We are teaching our teachers how they can use it in their classrooms, how they can make use it to make their lives better. We're spreading it out in our departments, HR, curriculum, federal programs. We're encouraging everyone to see how it works for them because by seeing how it works for us, we can show students how it works for them. We believe in Spokane Public Schools that we should be approaching AI technology and chat GPT in a really pragmatic way. And that that involves not uh, trying to prohibit its use. We it, It's here to stay. It's an emergent technology. It's going to continue to be infused in all parts of our world, we're seeing that in business productivity software and, and as well as uh, K-12 spaces, while at the same time uh, recognizing that we need to teach and talk to students and families about how to leverage them appropriately. So our conversation is centered around how can we use AI technology in a productive, positive way and teach kids on the front end uh, the best of our abilities about how to use them appropriately. Are there any positive use cases that you've heard about? from students or teachers around AI tools or maybe chat GPT? There's a lot of positive examples out there already. The biggest positive I've seen in how it can help write IEPs for special education teachers, we're in a national crisis to find special education teachers. In Rapid City, we are down 16 positions that are still unfilled and we're in December of 2023. We can't afford that. So we need to take every tool, that we can to help make things better. And ChatGPT is a great tool to help with that. The reality is, in terms of ChatGPT, is our kids jumped on it as soon as it appeared. What, it got to 100 million users in like two months. So for us to pretend it wasn't being used was kind of silly. When I talk to students about it, I think they see it mostly as a tool. I think they see it as a way that it helps them accomplish tasks in a shorter period of time. 
A lot of them use it as a way to generate ideas and to begin the framework for their answers, because I think they're learning that a lot of these tools, especially chat GPT hallucinates and makes stuff up. Um, from our teachers, what I see them developing is more of the use of AI as a tutor, as a way to help kids practice and grasp concepts so they can use it to generate questions for the kids, generate problems for the kids and allow the kids to practice and, and expand on their skills. So I think that's going to change. I think there's a lot more usages for it as far as a mentor, or potentially as a teammate, you know, just helping these kids work through problems. But I think right now, those are the two main areas we see it being used. I talked to a, an elementary teacher recently that um, they had a student that they were really having a hard time engaging and they were able to utilize chat GPT to access text that was at their grade level around topics that were exciting, interesting, engaging to them. And they were able to generate that on an almost daily basis. I think that's a, a really powerful example of how AI technology can really, truly, authentically provide personalized learning in a way that's accessible and doable for teachers. And we're really excited about the potential for AI to increase engagement uh, with students. With regards to AI tools like ChatGPT, are you changing any of your techniques for grading students and the types of assignments being used in the classroom? You know, I think it's pretty new. It's only been out for a little over a year. But in our districts, we are looking at moving towards evidence-based grading, which I think will fit very well into how chat GPT and AI will play a, a part in our future. That work is starting at the middle and high school level. We've already have standards-based grading in our elementary, so I think it's a natural progression. And we are looking at that movement. I've also spoken to a couple of students at Harvard University who are creating an AI that can help teachers grade. For instance, in an English class, students can submit their papers to this AI and it will grade it for all the grammar. And then the teachers just have to grade it for content. And those types of things are fantastic and it will help us be better. So what I would say when we ask questions, is it changing the way we do grading? Is AI changing uh, the way we assign work? I'd say it's an area that we're growing in. I know that we have used AI in the past. There used to be some way, it used to be able to use it graphing calculators. And teachers could send problems out and the kids would answer and the graphing calculator would answer the, whether they got it right or not. So we've already got some examples in the past of people using machines to help with the grading. It, it happens on a lot of, of, of ways. Uh, but I think it's an area that we're going to grow in. I think as we learn more about it, especially on the assignments, I think the concept of prompt engineering is really exciting. And as we train our instructors on how to ask really good prompts and train them how to think about it, and then they in turn teach our kids, that's where the real power is because they're going to start learning the ways to ask the, the AI to generate content that really is unique, but you have to be so well-versed in the prompt. Um, that's where it's really going to happen. That's something I think we're still learning and growing in. And then I think the grading will really follow up what type of assignments are generated out of, out of that type of uh, development. Yeah, I think that's very much an evolution. Obviously, it's coming up the most right now in uh, in our English courses at the secondary level. And we're, we're just really trying to lean in and get feedback from teachers, get feedback from kids, get feedback from families about what makes the most sense. Um, we're also trying to lean in and have conversations around what are those literacy skills that are going to be the most important to nurture for students in a 21st century world and, and workplace. And, uh, you know, we're, we're asking ourselves all sorts of questions around, well, what does the future look like in terms of AI technology drafting content? And then the, the, the role of the student, the role of the employee is to, to go in there and personalize it and edit it and revise it and add to it and make it better. And so I, I, I would wonder about anyone who thinks they have the answers to all these questions. I think what's really important now is that we're, we're asking ourselves lots of questions and we're, we're creating spaces to think about those questions and what questions those questions will lead to so that we can have a really thoughtful, thoughtful approach. But you know, things are moving so fast and the technology is evolving so quickly that we need to be really mindful, rushing to taking really firm stances on what's the best way to leverage this new world that we're in. 
Thanks for listening to our smartsocial.com podcast. I'm your host, Josh Oaks. This was our district talk segment where we interview school district leaders to learn how they're keeping students safe on social media so those students can someday launch into their future by shining online. This episode was brought to you by our smartsocial.com VIP program. It's called the Very Informed Parent Program, which helps you engage your students with teen-led video lessons. Stay one step ahead with our premium parent newsletter and discover hidden features on trending apps on teens' phones and our 54-plus live parent and student-friendly events every single year. You can click on the link below to chat with one of our team members if you want a free pass to our VIP program to support your community with our smartsocial.com resources. And if you're a district leader who has a success story, we would love to feature you on a future episode. You can click the links below to reach out. Thanks so much for listening, and we look forward to seeing you on the next episode. Have a great day.